This is my disk destroyer. It's a mean little machine with one job. Testing grinding disks. With so many grinding disks and countless reviews, it's hard to separate fact from fiction. This is where the disk destroyer comes in. It cuts through the noise, delivering real results. No bias, no sponsorships, just cold hard tests. Grinding disks can face a lot of real world challenges, like high and low pressures, hot and cold materials, and of course, fast and slow speeds. This machine tests it all, so that we can finally find the truth in the reviews. Today I am testing the Ovation Attacker Plus Type 27 flap disc coming in at $9.19. This is what I would consider a premium priced disc. But does it live up to its price point? Well, consensus online is, well, it's actually quite empty. There doesn't seem to be any discussion online around this disc, but that doesn't mean plenty of people aren't still buying this disc totally blind. So instead, I'll test this disc myself to identify its strengths and weaknesses, so you know what you're buying. Let me break this down for you. Each disc will be grinding this test bar to see how much it can remove within 20 minutes time. This will chart out its story and tell us exactly how this disc behaves based on how much material it removes at any given point. But if the disc stops effectively grinding the bar or just straight up disintegrates, the test is over. Let's begin. First, let's get a solid baseline on how this disc works. I'm going to test this by simulating light pressure grinding with a four pound weight. This is roughly the weight of the grinder. So how did this disc do? So far, not so good. This disc stopped making any serious headway on the test material by the four minute mark, ending the test. Taking a closer look, I measured only two and a half inches of material removed. This doesn't feel like a five star performance to me. To get to the bottom of what was holding this disc back, I began switching up some variables. First, I wanted to add some heat to this experiment. My hope is by heating up the coupon, it will give the disc an advantage helping it cut more metal before it peters out. So I heated the first few inches of the test material and let the disc go to work. But I soon realized the heat had almost no impact on the disc's performance, giving me near identical results to the previous test. To be frank, these results aren't fantastic, but I'm not writing off this disc quite yet. Next, I'm gonna try lowering my grinder speeds, hopefully extending the disc durability. So with the same weight, I dropped my speeds from 11,000 revolutions per minute to 6,000 and started my next experiment. But yet again, my changes to the grinder did nothing to help this disc. At slower speeds, the disc only survived an extra minute before I had to end the test due to no noticeable progress. So what's going on? Taking a peek at the disc after these tests plus the data, I can tell this disc is glazing. That means the abrasive is losing its quality too fast, stopping it from effectively cutting the coupon. That means if I want this disc to give some good results, I need to prolong the glazing for as long as I can. So I changed one more element of my experiment, the grind pressure. I did this by increasing the weight to a total of eight pounds. Now with the added weight, I increased my speeds back to 11,000 and started up the grinder. And this is where the disc really took off. With the added pressure, grinding on cold metal, the disc was able to chew an impressive 17 inches off the coupon. It also was able to last the entirety of my 20 minute test, only showing early signs of glazing in the last 30 seconds. The added pressure vastly improved this disc's output. Now to see how it fares against heated metal at the same weight. So once again, I heated up the first few inches of the test material and let the disc do its thing. And unlike the previous hot metal tests, the disc saw even better results. Also lasting all 20 minutes of the test, the disc was able to remove nearly 19 and a half inches of material from the coupon. This was even better than the eight pound cold metal test. It seems the hot metal gave the disc a slight advantage, outpacing the previous test early on and managing to keep that momentum. So what does the data tell us about the Ovation Attacker Plus? Well, for best results, you are going to want to make sure you use heavy pressure. Heavy pressure not only extended the duration, but also increased the disc's rate of material removal. And for a bonus, use this disc to grind hot welds to get even more out of it. And make sure to avoid using light pressure or slow grinder speeds. So is this disc worth it? Ultimately, it comes down to whether you think $9.19 is worth these results. If you'd like to see the data I've collected for this disc, as well as the other discs in these tests, I've posted them at the Fireball Forum, linked in the description. I'm gonna keep posting more and more of these test videos, so stay tuned to find the truth in the reviews. And if you're wondering why I built the rig the way I did, how it works, 
and what it's all about, I have a video that goes into great detail that you should check out. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.